How much is even too much instant coffee? All right, so early morning here, little vlog, little update on what's happening in the studio. Let's go check it out, eh? Let's just come in here, see what's been going on in the jewelry room. Got some stuff. Series underway. Some things to fix. Broken in Japan. <laughs> some series here, yeah, Piwaka Waka. This is all Maddie's work we've got in the jewelry room. A little buffing station's been moved. Give you a little area, and just to show you, this is the um, packaging area. Some recent works of mine. Also, my coffee, I'll oh, take a sip. And um, over here, some things we've been working on recently. Yo. So I've been casting a lot of my masters of my stone carving because I was kind of getting a little bit fed up with sending everything away and having no representation of the body of work that I have created over time. So I've been molding a little bit more just to give you an idea of how they do that. Essentially, um, they do something like this. Um, this is one of Maddie's molds. Pull the wax in. And away you go. So what is that one? Some rings and stuff. Okay. Uh, this beast about to be started underway too by Maddie. This is a um, really lovely bit of Marsden. And big Corfi flower. I'm going to come out of that. You can see the scale on that. Pretty large. So yeah, watch that. Oh, that's good bodybuilding exercise. Beautiful day here in Wanganui, so we check out the workshop, see what's been going on. We've had a little bit of a movement of stuff around in here actually. And um, yeah, we did a bit of a refresh. We took out an entire trailer load of stuff, rubbish and whatnot. So Toki to grind. Yeah, it's kind of deep appendants, not gonna lie. Uh, some single earrings. Pieces, uh, heater. Yeah, my grinding room. I haven't been in here too much. It's been so cold. You can see it's been a bit abandoned, but yeah, freezing cold in there. I ground all of that before the start of winter, um, so that I could start grinding that for summertime in New Zealand. Um, yeah, and then my station over here. Um, I started another series of. Um, Unique and interesting uh, heitaki in different forms. You can see my workshop bench is absolutely chaotic. This is um, this one actually got a little bit of like a smile now, a cry later vibe. But I didn't really mean to do that. But it's um, gonna do two heads on this one. The hand holding this torso. And see, this is a really nice pit from the Russell Beck collection. Same as this actually. But, um playing with this uh, the common Heitiki in here that many of us recognize with the hands in his mouth um, probably not going to be able to find it off the bat it's quite early Here's my drawings I can't remember where it is in the book anyway um, so it's just meant to indicate a hand in the mouth and then over here something else this guy I quite like this you've got these two manai heads uh, different heitaki form a little bit different to how I've been normally doing them I've done quite a few um, with like this little body sort of like that so just doing something a little bit different and this is the whole body of my uh, work in progress that's finished um i tried so hard over the last year to finish everything i nearly 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 have i'm so close um this is kind of new but who oh yeah um coming down grabbing two fish as you can see 
it's just quite detailed. There's many layers to that. So I'm only going to get through here. Here you've got the fish layer, the beak layer, the feet layer. Actually, undercut under the feet. And then on this whole back side, we've got a whole lot of stuff. I'm going to get a little bit, of, a little bit of light coming through. You can't see with that, but... Yeah, it's quite cool. Um, I'm going to cast that one in the middle. This is another part of that same series. You can see there. From the same stone, pretty much. Uh, yeah, so this one tree. I actually had an idea of um, maybe they're making this one into a clock. Um, let me fix that. But I'm going to cast this as well. And then a potential to once in bronze for me to put this bit on top in Ponamu again, so we have like a bright green tree. Um, or to do things where I actually drill through and I made a Manaya. Oh yeah, I made another piece for this. Wait, that's right, this. Tripping. Yeah, made that. Ironically, <laughs> this goes on here. It's like a tree spirit. Ah, uh, it's a black jade. It's kind of intriguing. Um, I'm just going to laminate it on. And then I thought maybe one day I could put like a clock mechanism. And then that would like spin. It's a little bit, it's pretty butty for a pendant. So I'm not, I was just not sure. But anyway, that's how I work. This is just my like thoughts and whatnot. Um, a little bit chaotic. This is, but honestly, this pile of stuff used to be so high i have finished nearly everything so i've been opening up my time to work on new projects um yeah, drawing on new stone i have all of these so i've um sculpted these on the computer these are digital sculptures that i've been um printed 3d printed and i'm going to cast them and come fix up all the lines and all the scenes. You can see these plastic lines where it's been glued together. Working with the printer and fielding. Um, but the thing is, is that I would never be able to carve this form so perfect in stone so quickly. I can make this in about 20 minutes on the computer. Whereas that would take me months on stone. So um, the idea is that um, we bring these into some other, other medium. So like this, like we got like this. It's quite an interesting, like, shield form. Um, it's just like a whale of some kind. I imagine, like, for example, see sperm whale vibes? I imagine this, like, on a stone base. We got all this granite down here. And, like, on the stone base, suspended, like, something like this. You could even do, like, a um, Ponamu woman form, you know, a whale rider. You could put um, Manaya on top. There's all sorts of things you can do. But you just imagine that in um, glass or ceramic. Uh, even in wax. So, there's more of them here. There's another one. Yeah, that's weird. This one kind of has like a nose of an animal vibe. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to... Um, Give a little bit more of a documentation of what's been what's going on in here and what's been going on in here because when i look back at some of my um collation of information around my carving and my works in progress there's like massive gaps and massive things that are, are missing so like i um yeah i just wanted to make sure that i had a little bit more of a journey you know to show you all Kawakawa stone, baby. On the grind. If you want to see more content like this, just follow along. I'm going to be trying to share a bit more of my carving journey on here. A bit more of my creative journey. Um, maybe some hunting and whatnot as well. Been out getting deer um, here and there. So, yeah, give us a like. Give us a follow. Stone carving in action. Handmade in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Peace. <laughs>
what's about. going on in the jewelry workshop. It's a short line. That's your dog. And like I said, from a safety point of view, you have to go. What's it like to rub? Fucking nice, man. How many times do you do this per day? Too many. Too many. Okay. Learning about dogs. Getting my tea. It's Australian black jay. New Zealand pearl nugget insects. It's an artist at work right there. It's a pure moment of artistry. <laughs> this is how you do it. What good is that, Maddie? It's a rough bit. Starting to get a bit further on this guy is really interesting. Um, Nelson Ponamu. As you can see, I'm just trying to bring some colour forth. I'm going to undercut under here now. Got this really cool back design going on. Um, I'm not going to pull the feet much in here because of the delicacy of these fractures, but it's going to look awesome anyway. Side suspension, and I'll cast this one in metal, so I think I'm putting some detailing on the back as well. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Obviously, there's a lot of softness up in this face, but I'm not really worrying too much. We'll just see what happens if something drops out. I would just make an adjustment. Um, yeah, like just sort of being free in the fact that there is some soft material um, in here, you know, particularly here where there would have been a hole, but it doesn't really matter. It's just going to all, all add to the design. And as long as I don't open them in the process, um, then I'll be fine. It's just one of so. I'm working on about five at the moment. Um, this one is just the one that I've been um, focusing on for the last sort of hour this morning. So. All right, so Matt's just been here. Got another one of the 3D print files tested out. This is like an organic uh, mythical dolphin form. Uh, a little mushroom behind, made by Maddie. So yeah, the idea is that I'm gonna come bog fill, sand, do the classic, and then come and silicone mold pour into metal um, so yeah really exciting process to go through as you can see the way that um, all this interaction you know just works it's lovely all these folds look at that just makes such an interesting organic form this one is pre-twisting so I have carved or sculpted this on symmetry like this and then there is one that I have twisted the symmetry of so I dropped the wings I flipped the tail and made it look like it's flying through the water so we're gonna have um stagnant and non-stagnant forms I don't know if that's the right word to use but anyway watch the space um scaling as well is just a test size uh, so you can see some other test size things for potential bases and stands yeah Watch the space. Really nice subtle shapes in the backs of these forms you discover. It's going to be really nice to bring that forward. Keep this high, drop all that back. But then there's a really nice form there anyway, you can see. So with like intuitive carving, look at the chaos of my workbench, but like a machine like this, any burr, Honestly, the cylinder can take you so far, okay? The cylinder, the cylinder, and if we're kind of like this, you can do so much. Needle, I do, you know, and then appropriate needle and, um, you know, sharp nose needle and non-sharp needle. Like, pretty much with these things, you can do everything. Like, I carve very intuitively. So, like, to give you an idea, see this now? I can't hold the camera, but I'm just going to draw on this. This is a pebble oniwa sandstone. I've just um, cut things into it, uh, testing tools at some point. 
but an item like this because it's perfect in nature you know there's so much so so much you can get from this see this look at this natural line from the sedimentation this can be isolated in the carving i just wanted to show you how quickly i can do this it's the end of the same day been doing this been over here i've been doing this quite happy with this this is cool uh, i love, love the back it's kind of like double manaya head um hey tiki face and i'm going to distort the face on this side obviously because it's like flatter but that's why it works with the top of the pendant when you look at it like that it kind of looks funny but the pendant is going to hang like this so when the string comes up the way that the face will um, be defined and then you can see the toes coming up onto the belly arms linking behind i'm going to get them to come around a bit more subtle scoop in there and got to about there on this one um, and yeah then on this one a bit more on there a little more on that so i'm just gonna do some lines on that and show you so something like this which is kind of like now an infinite uh kia or bird design you know like so bird heads all over the um the front, you can see then I use some of the deep gouges as then like um, talons coming in and what will happen is as I carve that lots and lots of different heads will appear and I can um, isolate and take things. So this is taking a perfect natural pebble form and just showing you that you can do so much with essentially one or two burrs. I'm going to do everything with one burr um, at the end of my day today. It's just like a nice creative outburst um working on these sorts of things i have to like pull and hold tight lines now and because i'm starting to get a bit more tired i'm just like okay um i want to be a bit more expressive and free so i'm going to do this which then i can like come back to at a future point and um and then yeah like finalize and work on so this being sandstone it's going to be really nice to finish and to carve something that you can know with the sand material, different to some a harder material, like a quartz or a granite or something. If you look at that out in nature, probably don't approach it with this approach. This is for um, really nice sedimentary um, stones that are like metamorphic, or I can't remember if this is metamorphic or not, but argillite is, which we also call, obviously, in Aotearoa, Pākoi. So um, this being Oniwa, being sandstone. So um, yeah, yeah, is the, uh, you know, um, Pākoi or Argillite. So these stones, because they are 100% homogenous um, due to the fact that they're cooked and that their matrix is not like linear and, um, yeah, I suppose linear, like nephrite, where nephrite you're going to get this layering in the stone, like a wood grain, a stone like this does not have that, which means that when you come to finish it and carve it, it's actually quite a lot different and in some ways easier and then in some ways harder, like just about knowing how to treat the stone. I treat this stone different how I treat this stone and treat these two kind of similar. But then, you know, a nephrite, nephrite like this, I will treat differently to a nephrite like this. And then something with the different color changes, you know, when you're carving, you're going to take that into consideration. Or you're going to take into consideration the inclusions. So there's a lot to take to think about in these sorts of things. Or here, you know, I'm trying to release these little guys on the waka. Um, I'm also simultaneously not trying to break the heads off and not um, create more chipping and these sorts of things. So sometimes working with these mid-range materials can be a lot more challenging, you know, than working a cleaner stone, but you can end up with a pretty cool result. Um, at the end of the day, you know, it's nicer to work clean green, but, um, you know, we get what we have in front of us and there are some beautiful stones here. So... Yeah, thank you for um, for watching and your intrigue. I'm just going to have a little play into this now and show you 
um, I imagine I'll spend about 10 or 15 minutes. Let's just see, I'll reflect back and it'll be a split second for you. Okay, so literally all I used was that one burr for about 10 minutes and I just managed to map out the beginning of um, of this piece. You see, you see I went around this, here and here and Noted on this stone, you need to be careful not to shatter it into your eyes. Um, but something like this, this is like running at the highest RPM and gives me a base layering to then come and drop levels to bring it to life. So it has like a true feel to it. And then once the levels are dropped to go over everything into slow RPM and then um, a stone like this, which is so um uniform can be pressure polished with silicon carbide pretty easily to come up with a pretty phenomenal finish pretty easy so there you go like this really didn't take me long it's really rough like i said it's like an expressive thing to do at the end of the day and then i'm left with that you know i can come to in the morning or um, another day and come and make it really cool and tidy otherwise i would have given up on my other work a little bit earlier just like I was saying because of my tolerance for pulling those tight lines and that sort of thing was dropping and obviously as I need to um, fulfill my whole day carving I need to find ways to still stay productive and this is one of the ways that I stay productive so yeah thanks for watching